This video is made possible by our friends at Atlantic.net. Now, Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they're offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs, block storage, and snapshots for one year. That's a free server for one year, plus $25 in free credits to use on other services they offer. Try Atlantic.net to host your portfolio, develop, test, or launch that next project. So go to Atlantic.net slash CoderFoundry and enter the code Bobby to get that $25 free credit. All right, so 2020 is a great year and it's also the beginning of a decade. And so 10 years from now, we're gonna look back at the decade of 2020 as a fundamental explosion in software development. And you're probably thinking, hey, it's already exploded. But the things that are coming down the pipe is gonna make it even increasingly. It's gonna make the last decade look small compared to the next 10 years that are coming up. And so a lot of people have decided to break into this industry to learn how to code. And many of you watching this are in that decision phase, like, should I break in? Should I try to learn to code? Is this a career for me? And you're there, and maybe some of you are watching this and you've already been discouraged. You've tried and you failed, or you tried and then you got discouraged by other people. And when, here's what I want to do is give you hope, that this decade is gonna be the coding decade or the decade for coders, and coding is the economic mobilizer of our time. So if you have the natural aptitude, regardless of where you come from, race, creed, or color, you have the natural aptitude, then you should look at coding as a career because it's gonna drive everything that we do. Now, when you make that choice and you make that leap, you may do some investigations on Twitter or social media to see what other people think about the career. What does it take? What do I need to do? What language do I need to learn? And you have all of this information out there. And I want to dispel three myths that discourage a lot of people themselves like you that are trying to break into the industry. And, I, and it comes from a common group of people. And I'm going to call these people gatekeepers. Are you the key master? Not that I know of. Gatekeepers can come in a lot of forms, but it's very discouraging when a gatekeeper is also a luminary in the business, or maybe they've, they own a product or a brand or a company and they're seen as experts in the field. And quite honestly, they are experts in the field and they are luminaries for a reason. They've done some really great things. But when they talk about junior developers or people learning how to code, they're kind of more of a, an elitist view or they're from the mountaintop view. And their world is in a bubble and they don't really understand anymore what it takes to break in into this industry. And therefore they think only seniors should be allowed into the coding well coding realm, and if you're a junior, you shouldn't even try to learn because you know it's impossible. You need 10 years of like commitment to study before you can even hope to break in. And I really believe there's a gatekeeper mentality with a lot of the luminaries in the business. There are some people that are high up that are very encouraging as well, but there's a lot of these gatekeepers and they, they're senior devs or they work for a company or they do something like that, but they are there to discourage you. And sometimes I only think they know what they're doing to you. Um, they just look at it from their point of view and what they know right now. And if you don't know what they know right now, then you can't possibly hope to break in. Now, as many of you know that I also run a boot camp, I also run a consulting company, and I've worked on a lot of large projects in my career. But what you may not know about me is that I'm also a self-taught coder. Um, and I did go to um, school to learn programming in the late 80s and when they taught us COBOL and I went from that degree to another degree and got a degree in finance. And then later, after that degree, four years later, I was then asked to come on as a junior developer and I took that position and I had to teach myself Power Builder at the time. And so I, when, I, when I talk to you about breaking into this industry, I absolutely know how you're feeling and that you think that you have to know everything before you could ever apply for a job and that's simply not true. Because most people, according to Stack Overflow, most coders working today, somewhere around 69% are self-taught. What that should tell you is there's hope for you if you're committed to your craft and you're willing to learn the things on your own and teach yourself these kind of skills. Or you can come to somewhere like Coder Foundry who can give you a jump start in like three months to get you to a certain place to where you can take your learning journey from there. But I just want to give you some encouragement that self-taught programmers are very real and we break in all the time. 
So one of the myths that you see a lot on Twitter, and we've even had it here on our YouTube channel in the comments, is um, with the rise of boot camps and all the computer science degrees that are coming out, and then things, um, all the self-taught routes you can go to, um, will the coding profession be saturated with a lot of junior developers and that the thing that you learn won't be needed? I think if you look at the industry as a whole, what you need to understand is there is an exponential growth for software developers. Um, so like we're looking at maybe between a quarter million to half a million jobs, definitely over the next five years that will be needed to fill the needs for software developers. And if you look at that between the number of people currently working and the number of people that are being produced through either boot camps, computer science classes and university or online boot camps, there isn't enough being manufactured right now. And that's where we got our name Coder Founder because we are creating coders. So I think that you can be well assured that your job is safe if you learn coding right now this year for the foreseeable future. It's never gonna become overly saturated because everything and every system that's needed hasn't been written yet. So if you look at say a bill of lading that comes from a a freight delivery company, you realize you're still getting three-part paper in many, many places in the country. You see that from UPS and FedEx where they've automated, but all the other ones haven't done it yet. And that's just one area that could be automated that hasn't been done yet, and someone will come around and write software for that. But we also have events, advances in driverless cars. We have advances in AR and VR. We have advances in the cloud and AI data science, as well as web application development, voice development, and also mobile development. All of those things require developers to do that. And there simply aren't enough of us that are coding working today to fill all those jobs. And that's just in the US. And the US has a bigger problem for the depth of software talent, but you can look in Europe, Asia, and everywhere else as well, where everything is being um, a software system that needs to be written. And so every company is in the software business whether they like it or not. And that drives the needs for people like you that are gonna learn software development this year and develop into that senior developer five to six years down the road. So don't worry that should I learn it because it's not gonna be in demand. It's gonna be in high demand for the foreseeable future. You can be sure about that. So that shouldn't be an excuse or don't listen to anyone telling you that that's not the case. It's simply not true. There's gonna be an exponential need for software developers. Now the second myth that I see a lot online and people coming into our boot camp talking to us about coding as a career and even people as I walk around in life that want to ask me about the career, they think that AI is going to take over all jobs and that AI or artificial intelligence will definitely take over the coding jobs. Now this is patently false not to mention the fact that someone has to code the AI to do the things that they're going to say. But I was talking to um, a young man and his father about not necessarily coming to Coder Foundry, but they were considering computer science as a career and they're asking me about it. And the father remarked, he said, well, I read an article that says that all websites will be generated um, very soon and there won't be any need for web developers. I want to assure you that number one, if you've ever built a website, specifically a web application has like complex um, features to it, you can't really speak in the phone and say, hey, build me a website that does A, B, C. And then it goes out and generates all the code to do that. Now there is code generation that's going on that makes our job easier, like scaffolding your database models or something like that. But there's nothing out there that's just generating a web application to do what you want. And it's not even close to do that. Trust me when I say this, Skynet is not coming to take your cheese this week. Artificial intelligence is not going to take over the jobs of coders. In fact, the tools that we see coming along today are going to make the, the capabilities more robust for the developer to build like new and exciting things. We have speech to text, we have um, vision programs, we have a lot of things that will drive a lot of innovations in the next decade, but that's still going to require a lot of people writing a lot of code. And so software developers will work hand in hand with some of the artificial intelligence, but artificial intelligence is not going to take over their jobs. Now, the third myth that I want to talk about real quickly is this myth that no one hires junior developers. People that are trying to break in, they don't get a job, and they assume that because they didn't get a job, it's because no company hires junior developers. In fact, I saw it from one of our luminaries in our business on Twitter easily last week saying that 
the last thing this industry needs is a bunch of influx of junior developers. What they really need is a lot more medium to seniors. What he neglected to mention was exactly how do you become a senior? You must be a junior before you become a senior, so you have to break in some way. If all of these jobs are coming down the pipe, and say 250 to 500,000 jobs over the next decade, um, there's going to have to be a lot of new developers. And if you're a new developer, you're not going to just spring from college or boot camp, as good as our their programs are, and be at that senior level. That does take years of experience. The second thing that you need to avoid listening to is these people that are at the senior level, and they are projecting what they know onto you. And they're saying, in order to do my job, you must know all of these things. And that's true that if you're gonna to aspire to be in a senior level job, you must know things about coding, maybe you know three or four languages, maybe you know things about networking, security, and all of these things that are wrapped together in order to be a senior level job. But you're not trying to get his job. You just wanna break in and just help on the maintenance team, fix some bugs or do whatever. And so a junior level jobs absolutely exist and they exist for these two reasons. Number one, a senior dev average salary in the U.S. is somewhere around 105, depending on what study you look at, 105,000, and and the true rock stars are making 120 or 150 or something like that. And so, there are companies out there, your Googles and your Microsoft, that can afford to pay those high-end salaries because they have high-end jobs that they need done, and so they want to pay extra. So when you say no junior devs are hired, what you're not thinking about is the smaller companies that have software problems, but they can't afford that senior level job salary. And so they must take down their salary expectations lower, and so they'll take someone with less of either no experience if they have a great education background and a great portfolio, to one to two years experience where they've been working on other projects, but they pay them significantly less. And I think if you're a junior developer, the, like the minimum wage here in North Carolina probably as a junior dev is somewhere between 40 and 50, and that's still great. Um, a great salary for a lot of people. It's definitely worth breaking in at one of these smaller end companies and then working your way up to Microsoft. Having said that, if you look at a report that came out from Career Karma, you can see that boot camps are also supplying talent to Googles, Facebooks, and the Microsoft players of the world. And so now they've even saying that there is so much demand for this, we have to consider other types of candidates. And that means that you may come from a CS degree background, you may come from a boot camp, or you may be 100% completely self-taught. All of those things can happen and you can break in. So don't believe the myth that no one hires juniors because they absolutely are. Hey, if you liked the video that we had today, please subscribe and hit the notification so we can bring you more great content. Also engage with us in the comments. We try to answer every comment there is. Um, feel free to ask us questions, um, offer criticisms, whatever you wanna do, we'd like to engage with you. But please subscribe to this channel so we can bring you more great content. So if you've been watching this and maybe you've been discouraged, you fell off the wagon, maybe you've had a, um, a start and you didn't quite learn how to code, or maybe you're the first time you're thinking, hey, maybe this career is for me. Maybe I can do this. I'm here to tell you that you can. What I want to stress to you is that this is a skill-based industry. So if you want to be a coder or a software developer, you have to know how to code. And there's multiple ways that you can get there and do that and you all kind of lead to success. The first way, obviously, here at Coder Foundry, we're a boot camp. We would be honored to be your teacher, your coach, or your mentor. So go to coderfoundry.com slash job roadmap. My team will be there to help you get you along the way. But if you can't go to Coder Foundry, consider a maybe a two-year degree or a four-year degree at a university or a college. Or if you don't have the time, effort, or money to do any of those things, you also can go the self-taught route by looking at the performance of online resources that are available, and there's never been a better time to learn how to code than right now. And there's never been a better time to learn how to code than this decade because of the explosion in job growth, the amount of money you can make, and the kind of personal satisfaction that comes with building something and then seeing other people use it. So I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.